Hey guys, welcome back to the X-Ring. On today's episode, what we're gonna do is review a chronograph, uh, but we're gonna do it indoors. As you know, most trap style chronographs, unless you have some type of ambient light source or direct sun, uh, they don't usually pick up the bullet as it passes through the trap. Additionally, all of my other chronographs were shot up by my buddies that were either borrowing them or out of the range with me and wanted to get their velocity on their bullets. And next thing I know, I've got a useless chronograph that's got a bullet hole through and through. So what we're going to review today is the Lab Radar Doppler chronograph. It uses a Doppler radar on the back side here. You simply aim it at your target, you shoot alongside of it, or in our case, I've been using this for about two years, or for about a year or so since it's been introduced. Uh, we'll have one shooter on the left, one shooter on the right, and so you can get multiple chronograph readings with just the one unit. It's a great unit. I've never had any issues with it, but I never shoot 22 with it. Uh, I know that 22 bullets, there's not enough surface area and it has a hard time. Um, so I'm interested to see how that works with like a 22 handgun. And I've got a couple different uh, ammos uh, that we're gonna try out in it. And I have compared this against chronographs and it is spot on, so no issues there. So this is what it looks like, guys. It is powered by six AA batteries, which go underneath here. You can use auxiliary power here if you like. And it's pretty simple. You've got your on off, you've got target, basically hot or not hot. And then you can go into here and configure it for whatever projectiles and distances you would like to see and trigger sources and whatnot. Uh, this is a place to store that information on an SD card. Very sleek, compact design, and it also has a stand that is optional that I would highly recommend that you get. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to review the Doppler Radar by Lab Radar. All right, guys, so this is the optional stand system. Uh, basically, the unit would click onto the top of this. You tighten it down. It has a little level here. You have this adjustment so that you can adjust your ball swivel here for whatever your angle you're going to use. And you can lock that down. And then you can release this side here. And then now it can rotate left or right. Uh, I would highly recommend getting this stand because I don't know any other way that you're going to be able to attach this unit to the top of this uh, with this quick release. Uh, but basically... I have, you know, you can use this on the bottom of a tripod if you like. It's a standard, um, uh, I think it's a quarter 20 thread on there. But basically, you just open this up, put it in, and put it on like that. Once you do that, now let me zoom out just a little bit and adjust my camera. Now you're just going to point that. You've got a sight line here on the top. And now with that ball joint, I can, or that hip socket joint, I can adjust in the angle that I'd like to be shooting in. Okay, so that's how it works. Now let's go over the power on feature. So let me move this a little closer. Just press the button here and what it's going to do is it's going to run through its check system. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this if I can and I'll try to get you guys a clear picture and exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so it says series seven. I wanna start a new series. So if I'm gonna start a new series, uh, what I can do is, are you sure you want to create a new series? I hit that menu button over there and then yes. Almost everything's gonna be done with this check mark. So we're on series eight. This is gonna be a brand new series. Now I can hit the little computer over here and you're going to see we've got velocity units. Of course, this is going to be pretty simple. Click on that, we're doing feet per second. Distance units, yards. Weight units, I'm gonna use grains. Select velocity range. I am gonna be using a handgun today, so I'm gonna choose handgun. All I'm doing is to using the check mark on the right hand side. I know it's a little black. Let me go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. I hit the down area, uh, arrow, so that select projectile offset. This is how far to the left or to the right um, of the Doppler I will be shooting. Okay, the closer it seems to work better, uh, but you can adjust this from six inches all the way on out to 18 inches. Okay, so I'm just gonna use 12. I don't wanna be really, really close to it. I can set my distances. Okay, so 10 yard, 15, 30, 35, 50. You can adjust this. So if you wanted to find out what the bullet was doing at 100 yards as far as velocity, you can do that as long as it picks it up. Projectile weight. Today we are shooting mostly 40 grain, but I will adjust this when we change the ammunition because we're shooting 22 long rifle, uh, mostly 40 grain, some 42. Arm time. This is how long you want it to be armed for, okay? Because the longer it's armed, the more battery power you're going to use. Screen saver. I've got it shutting off pretty early. Trigger source, uh, typically you wanna use trigger, not the Doppler to activate it, okay? So I'm gonna use trigger. Trigger level, this is the sensitivity on it. We use level one. Um, transmitting channel, that's good. That's in case you have multiple units. 
And what we did is we actually changed the channel when I just did that. So let me go back through here. So TX channel, TX power, we're gonna use standard power, date, time, factory reset. So that's pretty much it. Now, when I wanna go hot or active with this, the only thing I need to do is press this button until it turns orange. So I can press it once, nothing happens. Now that was the first one. What you're doing is you're basically double tapping this, like double tap quickly. Oh, battery level is too low, okay? So I don't know if you guys can read that, but it's saying it can't arm the system. Please change the batteries or connect to USB power source. So this is perfect for the video because I had also ordered a power source for it. And I put a piece of Velcro on the side, do that, plug in the USB, sorry, like this, and then lifts this flap up. And now what I can do is connect into the unit with an alternate power source. Once I do that, now if I want to arm, I double clicked. If you guys see, it turned from blue to red. So it's hot and it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter to continue. There's our velocity. Guys, this is the signal strength that it got from the back of the Doppler, okay? I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can see the screen. Series eight, shot number, feet per second, yards. Okay, so that's what we've got. I'm gonna unarm it. And we're going to get to testing here in just a second. As the shoot with standard chronographs, you know that it's very, very difficult to shoot under fluorescent lights because of the way that they pulse, and it's hard for the sensors to pick it up on a regular chronograph. We're using fluorescent lighting. Um, it wouldn't, if I were using a regular chronograph in here, it would not work because of the overhead lighting. Um, so just so you guys can see what's up, right, guys. So this is the different ammunition we're going to be using today: Gemtech silencer, subsonic, and it says optimized for suppressors. Uh, 42 grain, 1,020 feet per second. And then we've got 1,070 feet per second for the 40 grain CCI standard velocity. We've got some stingers here, 32 grain varmint at 1640. And then I've got some of this uh, Aguila super extra high velocity. It's a 40 grain, but I'm not reading anywhere on the box on how fast this is supposed to be. It's supposed to be some fast ammunition. So we will see what it comes out to. All right, guys, so we're gonna start off with the Gemtech. 22 long rifle. It is a 42 grain. I've already made the change in the Doppler itself. It's supposed to be 1,020 feet per second. Before I load it, we are using one of the new Ruger Mark IVs. Um, this is the 2245 uh, light again, but like I said, this has got the quick takedown and disassembly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and arm the system. And you can see velocity there, possibly, if not, I'll zoom in. I'm holding it offset somewhere about six inches or so, and we're gonna go ahead and fire our first shot. Okay, so it had turned off, but it, it's always active as long as that light's on. First shot, 920 feet per second. Second shot, 901. Third shot, 914, 914. So I think you guys could have seen that on there, but I can go back and review. So it's giving muzzle velocity at 914, muzzle velocity at 886 feet per second when it got out to 10 yards. 15 yards was 886. So it, the furthest this could reach was actually about 30 yards, so 878 is where it ended. So that's the first test with the Gemtech that's supposed to be 20, uh, 1020, but that's probably out of a rifle or something like that. And you can see the real right, guys, so real quick, I'm gonna switch over to the CCI standard velocity, 22 long rifle lead round. It's supposed to be 1,070. I need to change the weight of it. So what I'm going to do on this is, because I'm in a series already, you see we've got good signal strength, I'm gonna turn it off, turn it back on. And what we can do now is when we go back to this computer, this is the quickest way I've learned how to do it, is just go back to the computer. I'm going to set the projectile weight. I'm gonna drop it down from 42 down to 40.0. There it is, done. And now I can arm the system. It's armed, I'll go ahead and load. And here we go with our first shot. 10, 13, second shot. 9.36, third shot, 9.24. So you guys can see how quick that is. It was a great signal strength because I have five bars here. We're still on series eight. So I'll be able to go in and review everything we've done so far. I'm gonna go ahead and disarm the system and I'll stop the video. All right guys, so now I've switched to CCI Stinger 
Now, I've already changed the bullet weight, which is a 32 grain varmint bullet. It's supposed to be 1,640 feet per second, okay, 1640. So I'm expecting it to be somewhere in the high 15s or possibly even the 16. We're already armed and ready to go. Here we go with the first shot. 1187, so a lot slower. Hold on. Here's the second shot. 1176. Third shot. 1204. So nowhere near the 1640 that's published, so that's probably out of a rifle. All right, guys, and so for the last test, we're going to do this Aguila 22 Super Extra High Velocity. I have no idea what the rating's supposed to be because it's not in there. We're already loaded. I've already put um, the bullet weight in there, and then we are hot. So here we go with the first shot. Nine eighty two, nine seventy four, nine seventy five. So that's very consistent ammo. However, none of these velocities came up to what the published or printed velocity is supposed to be. So you don't know their test platform, guys. I have tested this with nine millimeter forty, my ARs, my three hundred eights. This thing works. It takes one or two rounds to kind of get it dialed in because sometimes your frequency is a little low, but it works well. All right, guys, I hope everyone enjoyed that review of the Lab Radar Doppler Chronograph. Um, I will say that I've been using it on pretty much everything from my rifles, rifles suppressed to pistols. It always seems to work. Like I said, you try to get that signal strength as high as you can on it. I wish they had a little better aiming system for the top. Sometimes that groove doesn't make it the easiest thing. Uh, but one interesting thing is I have never been able to get it to pick up a 22 suppressed pistol. For some reason, that seems to be its uh, kryptonite. It just doesn't want to pick that up. I've tried it in front of it, behind it, beside of it, over the top of it, and it just won't do it when you put a suppressor on a 22 handgun. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed that review. It is not the least expensive thing. You're going to be looking at about five to $600, depending on where you get it from, for one of those, unless you find it on sale. But it is a great chronograph, very easy quick and efficient way to get your chronograph data. All right, hope everyone enjoys it. Have a great weekend. We will talk to you soon. Like, share, and subscribe.